student to this session of uh, mediator pattern uh, in this session we will try to under understand the fundamental of mediator pattern we'll go through a definition of it and also we will try to see a practical implementation of mediator pattern so first thing it's a type of behavioral pattern now let's let's understand that why do we exactly need mediator pattern uh, many times you know many times no always i'll say rather not many times always in projects we have components and there is a heavy interaction between these components now what happens is the interaction between these components if suppose they are they are they are very much high means you know let's say that you have two or three components and they exchange messages with each other and depending on the message messages exchange the one the other component gets affected or i can say a group of component gets affected then the logic can become complicated and the components become very complex so if suppose you want to simplify this communication between these components there is where uh, uh, there is where mediator pattern comes to use so it helps the objects to communicate in a very dissociated manner okay means completely in a decoupled manner and thus minimizing the communication complexity and making the component more simple so you can say that mediator is like a traffic police so you have component one component two component three in your project all this component if they want to interact with each other they will first send the message to the mediator and the mediator will then then decide how the other components will get affected get affected for instance you have an order component you have a payment component and you have a, a product component so you want to say that the order component first checks for the payment and depending on the payment it goes and or books a product or orders a product so these rather than these three objects or these three components speaking with them with each other directly what they do is that they send their events to a mediator and the mediator then decides where to go so your communication logic is completely written inside the mediator and thus minimizing the 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 complexity of communication because if these communication logic is written in the component itself then definitely these components are very heavily tied up so if you want to change one component you also have to change the other component because even the communication logic is now inside the component so what we do is that in what we do in mediator pattern basically is we move this communication logic to the mediator let's understand that with a simple example we have a simple screen here it has basically four main objects one is a text box which takes in the name value a add button a clear button and a list box object so here are here are specific things which happen you know when you work with one of the objects how the other objects are affected the first scenario if you type something in the name right you want that the add button should be enabled right and the clear button should be enabled if you don't type anything then you just disable both these buttons so that means that in the text change event of the name the add button and the clear button is enabled good now second 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 scenario if you click the add button right it should clear the text box it should disable the add button it should disable the clear button so again depending on what the uh, the depending on so on the event of on event of clicking on the add button three components three objects are getting affected if i click the clear button the third scenario i should clear the text box name clear the uh, uh, clear the text box name clear the uh, disable the add button and disable the clear button again three components are affected so what's happening is that whenever from these four components whenever there is some kind of event in the four component the other three components are getting affected now rather than writing this communication between this component into one area right into into the component itself what we do is that we basically move them into a separate mediator logic if you look at how the complication will look like is something like this every component interacting with with each other directly and also taking and they are also taking the responsibility of how the communication will take place component should do the the validation of business logic they should not take up the take up more responsibilities like ui logic or uh, communication logic and etc so the best way is that we put a nice traffic police in between the mediator so if that if the text box is changing if the if the if there is a text change event in the name text box it will send to the mediator i am i am doing a text change event please go and enable the add and the clear button so mediator will take the message and send accordingly if the add button is clicked it will again send the message to mediator and mediator will then see what to do on the add click of the button with the text box and the list box and the clear button so the mediator has now the communication logic how can this be implemented here's our 
mediator class so it has it first it has basically all the references of all the four objects whose communications need to whose, whose interaction needs to be defined okay so when you start when you actually uh, when the actually you create object of the mediator first you need to register all these objects in the mediator class so you register the text box the list box everybody in it so that the mediator can if, because if the mediator doesn't have a reference of this objects he cannot do the communication now when there, there is now let's let's look at what we discussed scenario wise so if the first scenario we said the text change if the text change even happens the mediator says okay i will go and enable both of these objects to true if there is nothing in the text box i'll, I'll disable it to false second scenario if the button add click happens happens i'll i'll add the value to the list box and disable and clear the buttons and the text box if the click button clear happens a click button event happens on the clear button then i will do the following thing so what's happening is that all this logic all the scenarios are now being put inside the mediator class thus we have removed the communication logic or the uh, complicated communication from the ui so ui now will look very simple on the constructor or the initialize of the form of the event or uh, initialize of the form we just add all the components to the mediator so the mediator is aware of all the ui components now if you see in the text change i just say to the mediator please there's a text change event and he will take care which which components to enable which objects to enable in the mediator i say please it's a add button click the mediator will, mediator will then go ahead and and interact with other objects accordingly so you can see that in the ui now there is only one line of code and all the communication is shifted to the mediator class if you look at look at the sample code of it here the cls mediator so you can see that all the four objects which were discussed and the events and if you look at the form when the form constructor is initialized we first add all the four objects to the mediator so the mediator is aware of these four objects and then call the appropriate event of the mediator depending on which object is operated or which like if, the, if there is a button clear click we call the clear we call the click clear event if it's a button add click we call the mediator's click add button event so now if you see the client logic has been the client logic has become pretty simple you don't see a lot of enable and disables all the logic is now shifted to mediator and mediator handles this all request centrally so now let's look at how our class will look like or how our operations will actually happen or how the ui will function so once i type something in you see that it is enabled if i delete something it is disabled if i add it clear is for the text box is cleared and the clear is enabled so these all uh, interaction between the objects are now been taken care by the mediator class or been it has been centralized in the mediator class so that was a code walk through uh, i am sure that we were able to explain you how mediator pattern helps uh, mediator pattern is definitely one of the very important fundamentals or very important design patterns because all of our projects have object interactions all of our projects have heavy object communications and mediator pattern is a way to go where you can centralize these communications uh, these come the, the communication between the object into one one mediator class or a centralized mediator class and minimize your uh, minimize your component complexity uh, if if you have if you see the source code you will come to know that how the ui was so clean and all the interactions of the components were been uh, were centralized in the mediator class so a very important pattern always remember the question you should ask yourself is are my communication between the components very complex change in one component is it leading to lot of changes in other components or triggering some kind of events in other components is there a heavy communication yes if the answer is yes then put in a mediator class in between centralize all this communication logic in this in the mediator class and simplify your component logic i hope uh, this uh, tutorial was useful to you uh, if you want to buy dvds and notes and source codes of all design patterns you can mail us at questpond at questpond.com you can also visit www.questpond.com and read about other design pattern videos uh, we are sure that it will help you uh, in improving your knowledge and also practically telling you that how you can implement design patterns in projects i hope this tutorial was useful and uh, see you in the next design pattern tutorial